in this video clip, we will talk about set relationships. Before we do the relationships, we want to consider two special sets. One is empty set, the other one is universal set. An empty set is the set which has no elements inside the set. Okay, that's why we write element set, uh, empty set like this. Uh, curly brackets with nothing inside, with no elements inside. Okay. Another way to denote empty set is by a Greek letter phi. Uh, it's like a zero with slash in the middle of the zero. Okay, so two ways to denote an empty set. Another special set is the universal set, okay, which is totally opposite to the empty set. A universal set is the set which includes all elements interested. Okay, for example, if we are interested in studying all the digits, then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, every digits uh, from 0, 1 to 9 are included inside the set U, then U will be called universal set. Huh. Those two sets are special. Now, now we got a definition about the meaning for the subset. Ah, you see the one I'm circling? Ah, what's the meaning for the subset? And here is the example. C has two elements, one, two. A has five elements, one, two, three, four, five. Every element is inside, every element inside C, like one or two, is an element of A. So then we say C is a subset of A, huh? which is denoted like this. It's like C less than or equal to A, but with the round side on the left. Huh? It's not really less than or equal. It denotes the set relationships. Huh? C is contained in A, or C is a subset of A, which is denoted in this way. Huh. Of course, in this case, every element is inside D. Inside D is also inside A. For example, 3 is in D is also in A. So you may say D is a subset of A as well. Huh. Okay. Now, What's the meaning for the proper set? Proper subset, of course, first is a subset. But if you say a set is a proper subset of another one, that means there is at least one element which is, uh, in this case, is there is at least one element in A which is not in C. Okay, then we say C is a proper subset. So you may denote in this way. Uh, C is a subset of A, but C does not equal to A. Okay, this is the way to denote the proper subset. Uh, but of course, D is a subset of A, you can denote in this way, but you know, D is not a proper subset of A, uh, because there is no element in A uh, which is not in D, okay? So basically here you can see D is a subset of A, but A is also a subset of D, okay? Actually, in this way, we say A, D are equal, all right? Okay, now, here, we may have a, a Venn diagram, it's like this. Uh, if you click on 
C, C disappeared. If you click on A, A disappeared. Huh? You may play around. C has two elements. A has five elements. So C has two, but A has five. And then you see every element is in C is also in A. So this circle C is contained inside this uh, big circle A. Uh, this diagram, this kind of diagram is called Venn diagram. Huh. Okay. All right. Now, here we have talked about relationship between two sets. Uh, if we let A be a different one, which contains A, B, C, uh, so A here is no more like this. Uh, so A has three elements, A, B, C. Now, A is an element, so you denote A belongs to capital A, uh, little case A belongs to capital case A. That's the relationship between an element and a set. If you put the brace, uh, brace brackets around A, then A will be what? A set. So do not write in this way. Uh, you can write A belongs to little case A belongs to capital case A. But if there is a, a pair of uh, the brace brackets, then in this way, it means A with the brackets showing that's a set. So do not write in this way. Okay. Yeah. You may write like that. This basically tells us that A is a proper subset of A. Okay. Yeah, because here uh, A with the prayer of brackets means a set. Ah, that's delicate, very delicate issue right here. Uh, this is correct because it's an element in A. Huh. Little case A in capital case A. And you cannot really write in this way. Okay, this is wrong. All right, it's because A with the brackets shows is a set. A set cannot be an element for this set, capital case A, okay? So for the relationship between two sets, you want to use this symbol. Uh, you do not want to use this symbol, all right? Yeah, but if it's an element in A, so you got to use this symbol. Okay, so that's the difference between A without brackets and A with brackets. Huh. A with brackets is a set. A without bracket is an element. Okay, a little bit delicate issue right here. All right, now, then we have talked about two sets are equal. Ah, that's basically, you know, A and D are equal. It's right here, you see. A is one, two, three, four, five elements inside. D is also five elements inside. So you may denote A equals D, huh? All right. Okay, now, here is the example, huh? This example is, if we have A is A, B, C, uh, three elements inside A, and we want to tell that how many proper subsets and how many subsets do, does A have, okay? Please be careful that A, this set, it has the empty set, as the uh, subset, huh. okay? A itself is also the subset of A. So you want to include all those 
all these two special cases. And then, of course, subset of capital case A has a subset uh, A with the pair of brackets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and you can see there is another three. Huh? These three sets are the subset of A. Huh? So in total, they are what? They are eight. Okay. So here, if we have uh, three elements in A, then the number of subset will be eight. So where does eight come from? A is actually two, two, two to the third, or two cubed. Okay, will be uh, eight. All right. Okay. Now another example, huh? Another example is this one. D has all the equilateral triangle. Okay, E is all the triangles which are isosceles triangle. We want to see which one is the subset of the other. Huh. Okay, equilateral means all three sides of the triangle are equal. I saw so this triangle means two sides of a triangle are equal. Now, question here. Is E the subset of D or D the subset of E? Huh. Here you want to be clear is that if three sides are equal, if three sides are equal, then of course two sides will be equal. Okay, so then every element inside D will be the element inside E. Okay, think about this. Ah, very delicate issue. Because three sides of a triangle A equal, then of course two sides of the triangle are equal. So every equal lateral triangle is of course the isosceles triangle. Okay, so that's why D is a subset of E. Okay, all right, I'll see you next time.